What's up, everybody? The BMW M4 review is brought to you by Heel and Toe Apparel. Listen, the manufacturers don't want to sell you stick shift cars anymore. They're tired of making them. So what can we do? A, we can buy the stick shift cars that they will sell us, like the new BMW M4. Or you can show your support on your body by getting some Heel and Toe Apparel. This stuff is really well made, soft shirts, great quality hats, and more that show your appreciation for the manual transmission, heel towing, and driving in general. And if you hit the link in the video description, we will give you 20% off your entire order at heelandtoeapparel.com slash TST. That's heelandtoeapparel.com slash TST. We got shirts, hats, socks, and all kinds of accessories that you can use to show the world your appreciation for three pedal cars. Now, enjoy the review of the 2021 BMW M4. Hey folks, uh, welcome to a rainy, foggy, damp, and cold, California cold, uh, yeah. morning. I mean, it's like 45 degrees, which is cold for California, cold for testing cars on summer tires. But uh, nevertheless, here we are in a, uh, a pretty wide open canyon road. Zach and yeah. myself doing the 2021 BMW M4. Uh, this is a base model car, not a competition car. Mm -hmm. uh, the good thing about that is not that it's down 30 horsepower on the competition. The good thing is that you can get it in a six speed. Yep. You can get the M3 and the M4, the coupe and the sedan, both with a stick still, which is fabulous. It's a real six speed. It's not, they haven't added funky seventh gears. Right. Um, but you can't get it with the comp. You can only get it with the regular. You gotta get the eight speed auto with the comp. So our regular M4 has a 473 horsepower S58 inline six, making 406 pounds of torque from 2650 to 6130. It's a very wide power band. Mm -hmm. It actually has more power and more torque over a wider power band than the Mustang GT's Coyote V8. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So if you put them on a dyno, this six will actually have a more area under the curve than that five liter V8, which is a modular engine. That's very yeah. good. Um, it'll do zero to 60, according to BMW, in 4.1 with the manual. If your goal is zero to 60, you shouldn't be you buying the manual. Right. Um, and so that's not really the point. Uh, you get a standard 18, 19 inch staggered wheel. This has an optional 19 and 20 inch PS4S with 275 fronts, 285 rears. And you have to get those because it has the optional ceramic brakes which mm -hmm. don't fit under the regular wheels. They're $8,100. Now, dimensionally- but they save 30 pounds, I think, total. <clears throat> they probably, yeah. yeah. If you read that, I believe it. That sounds <laughs> right. I didn't read that one, but uh, sure, yes. Um, the dimensions of this vehicle are, are you ready for this, Zach? 2.6 inches, inches shorter length, but 2.8 inches wider, or longer wheelbase, mm -hmm. 100 pounds less, but 1.9 inches wider than what car? The old M6. The old M6. This car is. What do I win? This car has th almost three inches more wheelbase and almost two inches wider and eight more cubic feet of passenger space than the old M6. Wow. I mean, that, that just highlights how big all cars are getting. Right. It's not just the BMW thing. Because this, this car is only a few inches longer than the old M, uh, sorry, M4 but it has a little bit longer wheelbase. Right. It's only half an inch wider, but the front track is actually But it was an inch already big. Oh yeah, no, totally. All, we were talking about that car being big. Right. And now this car's bigger. Yeah. They stop, have not listened. Stop telling dealerships that you want a little more space. <laughs> a little everything. more space is okay. bad. Buy, a, buy the six. Anyway, um, in my opinion, the best part of this, the best part of this car is the S58 engine, which was fabulous in the X3M also. It has a closed deck, a forged mm -hmm. crank, a 3D printed cylinder, head core and uh, it is a it is a hot rod yeah. motor. Oh yeah. So let's go. And traction will be at a premium today despite the PS4S tires. I'm gonna go into my M1 mode. What I like about the M3, the programmable M1 and M2 modes, 
Uh, you can set it how you like it and then have it on the one button. So for me, as you maybe heard there, I have deactivated rev matching for my M mode. I've also got the engine in Super Sport Plus, the traction in M Dynamic, and uh, that's pretty much it. Oh yeah, we've got adjustable brakes in this thing. We've adjustable everything. Everything. I mean, they've, they've let you adjust the steering, throttle, and shifting for a long time, and now you can actually adjust like the brake feel and how deep into the pedal you have to go. It's kind of interesting. Truth be told, the car was delivered with that brake mode in sport. I left it in sport, and I found that to be a totally acceptable... Oh, birds! birds. Oh, no! Whale. I didn't just kill a partridge, did I? I don't think so. I, think I hope not. It. I think the partridge ran off. The car is so agile, you were able to dodge it. Right. The weight is 3,850 pounds. Yikes! Heavier than a Mustang, folks. This is a big, heavy car, and so whenever we talk about agility, stuff like that, it's going to have an asterisk on it because mm -hmm. it's going to be, oh, it's agile for a 3,800-pound giant, you know, GT car. Of course, and a lot of that agility or the sensation of it comes from uh, the uh, alignment, the steering rack, the variable steering rack, all adaptive the Adaptive suspension. Things, adaptive suspension, all the stuff that, you know, masks the weight of a vehicle. Right, and it's got a lot of tech, and right. it's got a lot of good geometries that help mask the weight, right? Mm -hmm. The suspension is tuned very nicely. It's not too stiff. Uh, the ride quality is really good. Uh, because it's an inline six and not a V, you have more room for your front suspension to work, which is actually very, very good, and has always helped the M3 balance ride and handling except for the obvious E90 generation. Uh, this car uh, got all new front control arms. It got new bushings everywhere. They did a lot of work you know, to help make it more agile and more comfortable. I think they isolated the diff a little bit with new bushings so that it wasn't quite as rigid. Remember the old one used to just chatter right. over everything? Right. This still feels pretty stiff. I mean, it, 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 it doesn't ride world's different than the last one. No, it's it's definitely in the same family. Yeah. I love the gear shifter. It's a little further away from me than I would like. It's kind of clear it's in the middle, but the car's gotten so wide that the middle is actually more towards Zach oh, than yeah. I want, right? I mean, you know, we were on the way up here, we were talking about the M2. The big difference is like literally size. Yeah. It's a big difference. You know, the, the width of this car, the cabin feels super spacious. I'm actually you're, stretched you're out. spread out. Yeah, exactly. You're man-spreading. Exactly. I'm trying to look much bigger than I am. The ratios themselves, the six-speed, is very good, except I actually think first is a little short. Given the wide torque band, right, and given all the things that we know about this engine, I feel like I get out of first a little quickly and into second, whereas we've got so much torque, I could easily have first be 20% longer and still feel like I was going pretty good. Remember, in gotcha. the six speed, we're not drag racing. We're not launching it. That's not why people would buy this. And so I think all the ratios are really good, but first is just a wee bit short. It's very composed in the wet. I mean, these PS4S's, even though we're 275's and 285's, you know, we're good here. It is really quiet in terms of road noise. Now that right. we're on, and this is lightly cracked tarmac, but it's much better than the freeways around here. I mean, the wind noise is managed really well. The road noise through the tires is really good. Um, this is much quieter than the, the Kia Telluride, and that yeah. was like a big, fat luxury vehicle. It is quiet. Yeah. The ceramics have really nice feel, too. They're not squeaky or too grabby. When I'm heel towing in a slow braking zone, meaning like a gentle brake with a heel toe, they don't grab too hard, you know? And look. Jeez. This thing is real fast. Yeah. And it masks. It really masks speed. Whoa, well. that was an enormous number. <laughs> but the thing is, Zach, the old one was fast too. You know, I didn't really get out of the old one, which we drove in both stick and DCT, and go, 
What this M3 needs is to be bigger and faster. That I didn't have that thought, did you? No, definitely not. I always thought it was a little too big for, for my taste in coupes. Um, and it was plenty, plenty fast. The problem I had with the last one that I think they fixed a little bit is the last one made max torque super low. And right. it was like, a, it was that torque cliff. Right. You know, you just ran into this wall, you climb it, and now you have all the torque, which made the car feel really fast, but actually made it break traction far too much at the low lower revs. It, it was hard to modulate. Yeah. It, was, it was kind of... It was unruly. It, it wasn't really fun to drive. And this, they've moved that power band up a little bit. And then, like you said, they made it really wide. Turning um, radius, average. Zachary, yeah. it is your turn to have a go. Yeah. In general, the shifter is very good, but you know what it really made me think about? How great the manual. This, this car, because I got it. <laughs> so right. first gear red lines in like the middle, the high 30s, yeah. right? So pretty short. Pretty short. When, you know, a lot of cars make it way too tall, though, like came in or... Lamborghini words, you know. Right, I agree. Like Other cars so, are too tall. This one happens to be a little a too short. A scotch too short. Yeah. This thing does devour road. I mean, it's very man. fast. It is very fast. Yeah. And the uh, electro, I agree. electromagnetic dampers do a pretty good job. What, what setting are we in right now? M1. Um, and my, we're in my M1 setting, which is. Uh, comfort suspension, yeah. sport steering, sport plus engine, sport um, brake, uh, but the comfort shock. I always, always yeah. drive on the comfort shock. I found unless you're on a very smooth racetrack and you're timing yourself, you're just going to have a better experience on the comfort shock. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, things I do like about the car, the fact that it's bigger does translate into a lot of usable space. The back seat is totally usable, even in the coupe. The front seats you can really lounge out in. They have really nice bolstering, really effective heating and cooling. Yeah, very adjustable um, seats. You know, they've done a good job with the luxury features of the car. It's put together very well. It feels very tight. Um, I like what they did with buttons are haptic feedback but they feel like they have a very small depression in them. Yeah. So it is slight it kind detent. Of, yeah, slight detent so you, you know you're hitting the button when you Yeah. Hit. And you've got your your scrolling knobs but also a touch screen. You've got both and I like that. So I like to scroll through radio stations and I like to scroll through some other features. But every once in a while a warning will come up and you just want to clear it and you just boop and hit it, you know, or you want to go quick to one mode versus another and it's one you know, it's a touch here, then a scroll here. Right. I like that you can get, you can sort of have it whatever way you yeah. want. And you, you can know? use gesture control if you want to take a lot longer to do something. I have, I have no. found it really difficult to use and inaccurate. And it's just, I hate gesture control. Yeah. Gesture control is dumb. The idea of having a touch screen, but then also you can just wave your hand without touching the screen. <laughs> that seems like, like just, touch, the music, just touch the screen, you know? It's very royal, I think. It's like, yeah. do you want to have experience a little bit of royalty in your well, car? Just and wave <laughs> your hand and it plays music and orders you food. Right. And there's a Bring knob. someone to kill. You know, the, the, the biggest gesture control is the volume, right? That's the one they always are suggesting that you use. And your hand is here on the dash for the volume. And it's a knob, it works, it does exactly the thing it's done for 50 years. But they're suggesting that rather than this knob, you wave your hand in front of the screen, which works maybe 20% of the time. Yeah, uh, when I reviewed the 850, I had a drag race with myself where how fast <laughs> can I control the volume? I remember that. The uh, steering wheel, <laughs> the, the knob, or the gesture, and the knob wins every the time. The knob wins course. every time. This a well-placed is knob is perfect and should never be removed from a vehicle. A well-placed volume knob and a well-placed scrolling knob. This engine is very nice. It, uh, this corner is so band, weird. It's it is very nice. Off -camber. It's, it's a funky off-camber. It's only on... a few degrees, so it, can, it could catch you out. And it's always got gravel in it. It really feels like it makes power all the way to the top, and it feels like you can use it instead of getting that punch of torque at the bottom right. and just kind of, I don't know, just peeling out the whole way. It feels a lot broader, which is what the good, you know, NA motors of the uh, M Pass were about. It does, you know, it builds in a more linear fashion, yes. and your peak horsepower is, is way up top as usual. Uh, Red line's only around at, at about seven. It's not a super super revy motor, um, but with such a wide power band, you know, you, you can, don't need it. Yeah. No, it's good. 
It does sound more pleasant than the last one, too. No, Will's been in second. Yeah, Will's been second. in second. Yeah. The brake feels pre it's, it's really good. You know, it's, elect it's all electronic, but they do a really good job of transmitting feeling. Steering, mm, it's a, I mean, it's quick rack, and I wouldn't say it's as communicative as the, uh, the Civic Type R. No, like if I, that actually, was, I actually... I mean, we drove that a few days ago, but that was a very good EPS system. I mean, that's it is, and I think the fact that we went straight from Civic Type R to this BMW, it really accentuates things that they got right in the Civic Type R, and it really accentuates some of the things they got wrong in the BMW. That, that car had a better shifter, better steering feel, and a more connected road feel than this car. Yeah. Even though it was half the it, price. The shifter feel in this is, is very good. It's like, very I, good. I it's what you expect you. from BMW. It's, but it's, it's not what I as... expect from BMW. But it's not like, oh, yes. It's not like, touch me. The Civic Type R shifter is like, yes, please touch me. Please shift me. It will feel so nice. <laughs> it will. <laughs> the they, it's so it's begging you to come, to come shift it. That's like... Here's what here's the difference I think. When you land in the gate in the yeah. shifter, you feel yourself landing against something, either yeah. in front or behind, right? right. You feel that lockout connection. Yeah. In the Civic, I, I think you could feel the guides on the side almost. Mm -hmm. You know, you you almost right. feel more friction through the shifter. And the steering real quick, I feel the, the jitters of the road, but I don't actually feel the tires. Right. You know, I can feel the vibration coming through it, but I, I don't know how much grip I have left in the front. Yeah, I don't really feel the it. tires. That's right. In the Civic Type R, I felt the tires. Yeah. I don't feel the tires. No. Here. You feel the vibration because in the front, they, they've actually added a bunch of subframe connectors to this thing. There's vertical subframe connectors, like the firewall is connected to the strut tower. They got rid of that gorgeous carbon thing. Uh, connection that they had in the last one which is a bumper but the whole car is stiffer so look here's the thing about this car it's very ugly I mean you've you've now throughout this video seen it from the outside and if you don't think it's ugly well that's okay mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with not thinking it's ugly of course we super super ugly extremely heinous looking vehicle doesn't have a good angle on it. The front is way worse than the back, but it's a real, in my opinion, an enormous design fail. It looks, and, I, and all you need to know about that is that there's a guy or a company that makes a body kit mm -hmm. that makes the front end look like the old one. Right. And it basically fixes the whole car. It does. <laughs> it and fixes a lot of it. You know, the front, this car needs a lot, a lot of cooling. There are, I, how, there's two different cooling systems, like a low and high temp. You have your intercooler, radiator, the brakes need more cooling. There are actually extra radiators on the sides that right. the scoops like feed air into. Uh, so yes, you have a lot of cooling, but you still have the bumper beam. And, and all other modern cars also need a lot of cooling. Yeah. You know, how many cars have twin turbo V8s? Hit the blanket, that's right. Oh, say. yeah. Um, uh, that need to be cooled yeah. off, you know, expensive turbo engines. So... It's a design choice. It's a design. It was. A, it's a choice. It's a choice. The choice was made consciously to make the car look like this, and right. it doesn't look good. It's just. I agree. Uh, and and as I've been driving it around Los Angeles, I can see the faces of other drivers in traffic that are a, a, approaching it. See, go. Oh, that's the new M4, and I can see their face go eh, like uh, like ew. I can see the <laughs> ew. Multiple other BMW drivers I have seen this. Uh, it would like us to know that there's a black snack BMW smartphone app available. That's what it's telling That's us right now. Says. We literally have an email in our inbox on the BMW. Now, the yeah. other bad thing is that even though this is a base model, and even though it's got maybe a few more options on it than you might get yourself, this is $100,000. It is a lot of options. So the base price is seventy one k. Frozen white, thirty six hundred bucks. Actually, that's very cheap for a matte paint job for factory matte paint. Thirty six hundred for frozen white, twenty five hundred for this Kyalami orange uh, interior. Uh, the executive package with all the heated things and the heads up display, mm -hmm. twenty eight hundred. Uh, M Drive Professional that has your lap timer, your drift analyzer. Yes, the that's nine hundred bucks. Uh, thirteen hundred for wheels, eighty one hundred for brakes. Uh, the the disco lights, the carbon fiber trim, that's twelve hundred bucks. A uh, thousand for cooled seats, five thousand for the carbon exterior package, a thousand for the M drivers package, and that's a hundred and one thousand dollars, including destination. So, a lot of aesthetic mods. A lot of aesthetics, but also 
stuff that in the M3 you might want. You know, you well, might want some of that stuff. The M drivers package. Yes, stuff I like, like those the, things. Yeah. I like you know the so. brakes that that's to each their own. I mean the carbon. It all looks nice, but you could save a bunch of money. You could. Those. You yeah. could. Um, overall, in my opinion, for this kind of money, the M2 CS is the one to have. You still have a back seat. You still have a lot of the things that you would want out of a BMW, but as a more traditional BMW design, it's faster, lighter on its feet, ragged, and it still doesn't. Still a good GT car. Still, still a totally good a GT time. car, and it and it and it has all of the performance of this, all of the performance of this, without the excessive size and without the excessively ugly styling. Yeah. So that's where I that's where we will leave you. I think today. Thank you for watching. Thank you to BMW for letting us have a go and uh, follow our podcast. We'll probably talk about this in much greater detail mm -hmm. over there. And we'll see you later. Bye. And remember, always fight your tickets. Use code TST10 on the Off the Record app available in the Android and iOS store, or go to offtherecord.com/tst.